The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Wrestling to the Max, Monday Night Raw, Review. Welcome everybody to this edition of Wrestling to the Max Raw Review for the September 19th, 2016 episode. And guys, we have a very full show uh, when it comes to Raw because you mean, lots of different things happen. That's right. They are getting ready for Night of Champions and they got a lot of stuff leading up to it. A lot of matches coming your way. So we'll be getting into that. Everything that happened in this show and break down our thoughts. But before we do that, just let you guys know if you are maybe a first time listener go check us out on all our other things we do and to do that go check out the w2m network that'll give you all the shows that we do well you know tomorrow night when you're watching smackdown live you may want to come and check out the next review guess what we do it right after the show it'll be there plus we do our normal episodes every week wrestling of the max episode one which will be taking place every tuesday morning and of course wrestling of the max episode part two which will also take place on friday morning for you guys on the download so go check those shows out don't forget w2m network go subscribe wherever podcast uh, network is near you and of course you can go find us at w2mnet.com that's also a great place to go check out a lot of great content plus you can get all our podcasts there as well so there you go guys some info for the for the brain but now it is time to talk some monday night raw Yes, it is, and uh, this edition of Monday Night Raw was live on the FedEx Forum in Memphis, Tennessee, so home of uh, the King Jerry Lawler, I'm sure, I didn't watch the pre-show, but I'm sure there was uh, lots of Jerry Lawler doing stuff with the crowd and whatnot. <laughs> Does anyone watch uh, the pre-show? I, I don't know many people that do, but I'm sure there are, but uh, I, <laughs> I, I just, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just, if I'm watching I live, I do. Do you really? Okay, hey, that's good to know. I don't know. I, I just I always think, of course, you know, Monday Night Football is on now, so it's kind of happens before Raw even starts. So I, well, I get the pregame you. does the actual game doesn't start until thirty minutes after Raw. So that's true. But I'm more always interested in the pregame. But that's because I'm a weirdo. But anyway, I mean that's that's fine. I usually just have it on, and then I switch it to Raw when it turns eight o'clock. So, uh, but. Yeah, so this Raw, and I, I want to take a moment to say that all the people that, that thought, oh, this is going to be like just like WCW now, they're going to start out with the Cruiserweights and everything. Guys, this is WWE. They don't change their their opening segment for anyone, okay? Th- this is what they're going to do until the kingdom come and, you know, whatever, all right? So everybody that kept saying, oh, the Cruiserweights are here, we're, we're going to stop having opening segments, this Whoa. shows you right here. <laughs> they are not done <laughs> having opening segments. But uh, I just I got into it with somebody in the group that was so dead set on that was going to happen. But uh, anyway, this actually wasn't too bad, I thought. Um, you have... Roman Reigns coming out to he's angry about what happened last week because you know he has a point somebody got involved they didn't do anything about it so <laughs> even though Foley said that something would happen if uh, Rollins got involved and then Foley uh, eventually does come out along with Stephanie they tell Roman Reigns that there's bigger things going on than him right now and that he will get Rusev at Class of Champions, but that Seth Rollins and Rusev, because they got involved in the match last week, will face off against each other. And Kevin Owens also comes out to air his grievances about this segment taking up time on television and and about how, you know, sticking at the Roman, that he is the one facing 
we're defending the title against Seth Rollins on uh, Clash of Champions and not uh, Roman Reigns. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's an opening talk segment. Uh, you also get a cage match made for the main event, which is Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens. You know, there are people that are two minds of this. People say you want unpredictability, but then you get mad when they have a cage match with no build. And then there's the people that usually think logically, like, well, you should have a build to a cage match. Or you shouldn't do something like this on a Raw or whatever. But what did you think? You know, here's the thing. I mean, I get it. You know, they're building everything in that whole opening segment. And they're letting you know this is the direction we're going in. This is why Roman Reigns, you know, we did this. I apologize, Roman. You know, my bad. I wasn't able to handle Raw last week. Oh, but guess what? You get a U.S. title shot. Okay, that's fine. Everything here was okay. The thing was, it seemed like it took way too long to get through it all, if you ask me personally. McFoley sat there and apologizing. McFoley kind of talking about his job security. Just way too much stuff, really, that we didn't need a lot of. I, I get it. Yes, if you like to sit and listen to McFoley talk, you love this. This is your dream. But I don't think it was necessary for the most part. Uh, so that's just me. Just me. How Gary was like, this is your dream. <laughs> it really was, though, because it was just Big Foley chattering on and on and on about this, that, and everything. And I'm like, dude, just say, this is what's happening. Sorry, Steph. I couldn't handle things. Now, this is what I'm going to do to fix it. Not, well, you know, I may be sitting at home on my couch if things don't work out, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, shut up, dude. We already see you on the network on your show. Come on, just get through it. Uh, I will say that I, Roman did mention Triple H saying that, you know, even though we may never see him again or whatever, that he's got to get his revenge on someone. So. Yeah, and and it, Roman didn't do a bad job, to be honest with you. He he did it. He didn't talk a whole lot, but he said a few things, just like Sean said. That one point, that's all I needed to say, and made sense. I was happy with it. Kevin Owens does his thing. He's always really good, so I mean, I didn't have a problem with him. And he, it, it was just the whole McFoley thing. They kind of drug it down, and I love McFoley, but it, it just that could have been done in about oh, I don't know, ten to fifteen minutes shorter. <laughs> I felt like it at least. Maybe it was short. I just felt like it was forever. I mean, Mick Foley's coming to Dallas, by the way, for Comic Con in October. Just a shameless plug there. But uh, <laughs> oh, he's gonna uh, hate me now. Oh man, I better yeah. get... <laughs> right, Gary, you better oh, not go. <laughs> protect me. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back, Gary. I'm here Thank for you, you, man. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this, I mean, obviously, I can't really weigh on on how length or anything like that. But this sounds fine. Like, I don't have a problem with Owens and Reigns in a cage match. A cage match. And the WWE means next to nothing these days anymore. If it's out on a cell, maybe you care. If it's cage match, it's that weird middle ground, and it just feels like another match, which might be a problem. But for WWE, I don't, I don't think it matters all that much. <laughs> oh, like, that so sets right. a lot right there. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so to continue on with this, they did have the Rusev and Rollins match. After this, as they had promised already, uh, they also had a back to the with Rollins and Stephanie, where Rollins, again, is wondering, you know, basically trying to see if Stephanie knows anything about what is going on and about, you know, why'd you throw it all away for, you know, Kevin Owens? And she was like, well, maybe, I don't know what Triple H is doing, but maybe, uh, maybe Kevin Owens or Triple H was tired of you. And so, you know, that, that could be why, uh, he did that. And so, you know, we, we get, I, I thought the seven was fine as far as, again, reiterating that, you know, Stephanie doesn't know what was going on and, and, She's and if she does, she's not gonna tell uh, Rollins about it either. It's a little bit weird to think that a husband and wife don't talk ever, especially when you have kids. 
but, uh, you know, it's possible that things could keep them busy um, to the point where maybe they, they don't have conversations about things. It's just, I don't know, it's that, I guess it's one of those things we're not supposed to really think about logically, but, um, yeah, I, and then you have the main event, the cage match as well. The Rusev and Rollins match ends in a double count out. Which I thought was okay because it protects both guys. Neither guy needs to lose right now when you have two big matches going into Clash of Champions. Uh, Roman Reigns he gets to hit the floor right before Kevin Owens, so he wins. I'm going to guess that's going to parlay into some kind of title match, possibly in the future, if he doesn't win the U.S. title. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that's your sort of main storyline going through the show. Um you also get some stuff with Jericho saying he's going to make a list, which we'll get to that later. But uh, I, the thing with him and Owens was kind of funny. Yeah, it was. And uh, just to touch on that main bout we had with, you know, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns, it, it was pretty solid. You know, uh, it, it was a pretty good bout. So, I mean, I won't complain about that at all. I think they did a good job with that. And, you know, it, it was what you expected, though. I think a lot of us watching expected Roman Reigns to be the victor here. So, no big surprises. And if you were surprised, you're drinking the Kevin uh, Owens Kool-Aid. What a Kool-Aid to drink, though, Gary. It's delicious. That's, that's some great Kool-Aid there. <laughs> yeah, it's like got some Canada Dry in there, you know, kind of. But anyway, go ahead. I like ginger ale. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I, I have to assume that this win over Kevin Owens is going to matter at some point. So expect that Roman Reigns-Kevin Owens title match somewhere, right? Because, yep. yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, the the Rollins and Rusev match was, was pretty good, too. But, I mean, it wasn't anything out of this world, either. It was there to set up the double count out and, and everything else. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and they did go outside of the ring and spilled out, and the whole double count out thing works once again because you don't want either of these guys to take a loss. So that's kind of the theme of the night when it comes to this, you know, U.S. and main title picture. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they do both these matches when it comes to the pay-per-view because, or whatever, yeah, the pay-per-view, because, uh, you know, it, would they have Reigns win the title and then as champion be going up against Kevin Owens or would they have him lose because he has bigger fish to fry or, you know, would this, I mean, this would be the time to try to do something with Reigns that isn't constantly having him in and out in the, that main title picture, I think, like just give him a little break. Let someone else be the one going up against Kevin Owens. You have the ability to make that Rollins and Owens thing more than one match. Uh, let it be that, and let Roman hold the U.S. title for a while. I don't, I don't know. That's just me. I mean, if you want to try to at all care to maybe get the fans to stop booing him, you got to keep him out of that title picture, right? I agree. I think you do, and you know why not? I mean, he it did to me personally. This does not stop him from doing bigger and greater things. There's plenty of guys that have won world heavyweight championships that have been the U.S. champion, that have been the intercontinental champion, who've done those minor titles, made big runs with them, and still been a bigger champion at the end of the day. I, I don't know why they don't want that to take place. I, I I'm not sold they're going to do it. If they do it, I think this is one of the best things that they would do with Roman Reigns, only because of the fact that you have different feuds. You could have a guy like Sheamus face off against Roman Reigns. You could have anybody in that mid-card situation face him against him and, and just do a solid job to where people start to say, you know what, Roman Reigns isn't so bad. Maybe Roman Reigns as a champion is not that bad. You know, I think you need to prove to people that Roman Reigns isn't just going to do a repeat of what John Cena has done. That's the biggest hate on him. You know, oh, it's just another John Cena. So prove to people this is ju not just another John Cena holding the title. Maybe they'll love him if he uh, does a great job and then he can move on to that Universal Championship. I, I don't have a problem with that. I think it all depends on where they're going with Rollins here, honestly. He's the... Uh... 
the big hitch in the giddy up because he's in the middle of a face turn and we have all the stuff happening with Triple H and whether you're, you're going to have Reigns jump in with all that. I think it's going to matter a great deal in the long run. But I I don't have a problem with him getting a run with the U.S. title, especially if he can work with some of these other guys down below the roster, maybe try to up their status some. We'll, we'll see what happens there. But Yeah, certainly. Uh, it's going to be interesting thing going forward with, it, with, with Sunday and everything. But uh, moving along away from the main sort of uh, title picture stuff you have uh the thing that i mentioned with jericho where he is he goes backstage to mick foley and he tells him look man i think you've been doing a terrible job as uh as the general manager i have a list i'm gonna start making a list of all the things i don't like about you and so you know foley had also retorted to him that he doesn't like him either and so you know Apparently, Jericho has it out for Foley. So, he actually goes out to the ring to talk about his list. Uh, going like This also goes back to that old uh, jericho D. Malenko feud uh, with him and the 1,004 holds or, and him having the list of holds, which is freaking great. If you've never seen that, seriously, you need to go find that. Find that on the network uh, on night. It, it's honestly one of the like best things Jericho ever did. Um, so that being said, uh, yeah. So Jericho comes out there, and then he gets interrupted by like by new by Enzo and Cass, by New Day, by uh, the freaking Epico and the Shining Stars and Anderson and Gallows. And then guess what, guys? We're gonna have a big old uh, ten man tag. Uh, that lasts about six minutes. That's a really short for a ten-man tag, but I guess you kind of got all three of your sort of mid-card feuds in here with Enzo and Cass and the tag title feud, and then Jericho and Zayn as well. What'd you think? Okay, so uh, the Chris Jericho thing was okay. You know, I. Uh, I've you know I've been iffy on Chris Jericho and this new character. I know a lot of people like it, and then there's some people that don't. I'm kind of more on the don't like it side. This was fine, I guess. You know what I didn't like is just throwing out all these tag teams. It just has nothing to do with Chris Jericho at all. And I guess you got to find a spot for the tag teams on this Raw, but that's exactly what it felt like they did was just throw something together. It was almost like, uh, where do you want me to put the tag team guys? Well, it really doesn't make any sense to put them out there when they're, you know, doing the, you know, the women talking with, you know, uh, I don't know, listen, maybe we put out the, no, Seth Rollins is out there. That makes no sense. Oh, you know what? Chris Jericho's out there talking. Hey, New Day, get out there. Uh, you know, you guys, everybody go out there. You know, that's what it felt like. It really did not feel like, this is a super big plan. This kind of felt stupid, to be honest with you. I, I'm not. I'm not in a bad mood. I promise everybody. I just, once again, I just thought this was kind of silly, and I don't think it really helped the case of the tag division. It, to me, it just was clutter. If it was less clutter, I would be a lot happier, to be honest with you. Enzo and Kaz coming out and doing their stick is fine against Chris Jericho. I don't like when you start bringing out the Shining Stars, New Day, and all that, because it's just it's too much. Just way too much, Sean. Did it, well, I mean, are you upset that Carson Wentz looked good again or something? Are you, are you, oh, no. Are I, you no, taking he didn't this look, out on Raw? Oh, know. no. Carson Wentz didn't look that great. Come on. Let's be honest. 190 yards. Well, jeez. I mean, right. you know, John Gruden couldn't stop, like, freaking having an orgasm about the guy. But uh, that's, that's for another podcast. But, I'm, you know... I agree with you. This was kind of silly, but this is what Jericho's been, you know, in this in this uh, whole thing where he's been back. It's he's sort of been silly. He's he kind of, especially with this thing where Kevin Owens is his friend. Is he's been the total like I'm the comedy part of the duo, and you know Owens would kind of do that with him as well. But it it was really turned up uh, to to eleven with him here. You know, I don't have a problem with it per se i mean you don't have enough time obviously on this raw with everything they tried to do 
to give each one of them their own segment. Yeah, you know, so, and, and here's the thing. I mean, and like I said, I get it. They had to put the tag team in there, and, and it, okay, it's fine. When they brought out Sami Zayn to attack Chris Jericho once again, they kind of tie the bow on it to basically say, "Well, guys, this makes sense because Sami Zayn comes out. That's where it ties together. Get it? Get it? See, that's that makes sense now." Oh, well, but isn't and, that the point of most of these multi? Well. I don't think that the, the baby face is supposed to run out and attack the guy just holding a clipboard. I don't know. I know it happens all the time. I get it. It's week to week. We see it all the time. But still, once again, I thought that was a little bit overboard. I, I think that really it should have been something to provoke Sami Zayn, not just have Sami Zayn come out fist of cuffs. It, it's not like Chris Jericho slapped his mom or anything. Chris Jericho just kind of demeaned him a little bit, really. I mean, so I thought that was a little extreme. But it is what it is, guys. It, it's just... A little bit, not my favor. It feels like they spent so much of the writing time focusing on the main single suites, they just forgot all about the tag team scene in the mid card. Like, oh, ta da! Here you go, 10 man tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, because usually the 10 man tags, they get like 15 minutes or so. They're mm-hmm. like, oh crap, well, let's just throw this in here. Uh, you know, that's the thing too, like we talked about the cruiserweights. Before, you know, now that's another division you have to give time to on Raw. And certainly they have the three hours to do it. But when you're trying to expand all these divisions, let's say that you have more than one storyline going on in that division than the one that's not just with the title. That's another block of time you got to give to something on Raw, you know. So, I mean... That's something that we got to think about when we start clamoring for them to add things. You got to think about what they're taking away and who doesn't get time and and all that stuff. So, I mean, you, you could take away one of the squashes or whatever, but they only last them like a minute or so. Uh, so speaking of those, you have Braun Strowman squash Sin Cara, basically. Sin Cara does get a little bit of offense, but not really. And then Bo Dallas squashes Jobber number whatever. Um... Bo Dallas basically just continues to believe in Bo. And that's pretty much it. Braun Strowman must have uh, not been liked by the the people at Devour. He lost his sponsorship over in one week. Wow. that man, That's pretty quick to lose a sponsorship. I mean, jeez. Uh, I mean, it but... took us a month to lose DraftKings, man. It took him a week to lose uh... <laughs> You know, maybe they didn't like his, the, the cut of his jib or, or his haircut. I don't know. I don't know One of the anybody two. Anybody likes the cut of his jib, personally, but oh, you never yeah. know. But you know, at, at the end of the day, Braun Strowman he'll get other endorsements. Trust me. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. And at the end of the day, these are two different, you know, matches that. Just build the guys that are, you know, Bo Dallas, Braun Strowman. They continue on that process. So nothing important here. Um, but, you know, I, I still want to know more about what's going on with, you know, the Bo Dallas thing. Only because Bo Dallas is doing not similar things to his brother, but kind of kind of come out there doing little poems that are, you know, a little interesting. A, a little Wyatt family vibe to him to an extent. So that's kind of interesting to me, but at the end of the, you know, at the end of the day, I love aggressive Bo Dallas. He, he's perfect in that role. Wrestlers doing poetry always reminds me of Heidenreich, and I don't know if I want that or not. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's an old reference. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm sure I sort of never miss forget. Heidenreich sometimes. <laughs> he was so off the wall by Heidenreich. Oh, boy. Yeah. Poor Michael Cole. <laughs> so one time I felt bad for that guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he would make Michael Cole read them, right? Is that... That's the infamous scene where he presses him up against a door from behind, and it looks like something else is happening while he's reading him the poem. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I kind of would feel bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we uh, move along from uh, this uh, frightening segment to something else. Hold out this. Uh, well, maybe if if you are scared of Nia Jax or not. 
uh, she has a another sort of confrontation, I think, with the, or they they officially announced the match for uh, Clash of Champions with with Nia and Alicia Fox. They also have this like video package with Alicia Fox that was a bit weird. Uh, it kind of tries to show that she's. Are they they going down this train of her being crazy again? Is that? I don't know if I totally understood what was going on, but at least they're giving her something. Yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do here. Maybe get her back in that crazy train or something. But uh, you know, I, it needs more. Um, but it's fine. I, I, at least they're doing something with her, and that's what's important. And we know Nia Jax needs someone to to have a you know. A, decent feud with until maybe something else comes along so i don't really have a problem with it but yet i mean still once again there needs to be a little bit more to it because this is so far in the background this is kind of like kalisto and braun Strowman. it's just kind of like oh this is just there to basically be you know enhancement talent for these people which it's good but if they put more into it maybe i'd care more yeah, I mean it's a, it's a little small mini feud, pretty much to make uh, give Nia a big win over somebody who at least has somewhat of a name, and I think that's going to be on the pre-show if I remember correctly for Clash. So that at least yeah. you won't have to watch it unless you you know you really want to, <laughs> or you're like us, we kind of have to. We kind of have to. Yeah, I mean Nia, I she's got to be next in line for that title shot. I think just whether. Whether Bailey or Sasha win it at at Clash, I think is secondary really at this point. If they're not positioning the entire division against Nia at some point, they're they're doing the monster heel thing wrong. Well, that would mean that Sasha. I hope it's Sasha, just because we've kind of already seen Bailey and Nia. We I have. I know, but ninety <laughs> percent of WWE's audience has not seen Nia versus Bailey. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I'm kind of on the on the board with uh, Sean on this. I, I would rather see Sasha right now, because yeah, I think we will eventually will see Bailey and Nia. But I think it'd be kind of a, a little bit of a breath of fresh air for, especially the people that do pay attention to NXT, to get a chance to see Sasha versus Nia Jax. But either way, you know, like Paul, you're right. They they that was one of the feuds that Bailey had before she exited NXT and they did a good, pretty good job with it honestly I, I enjoyed it and you know the monster that Nia Jax can be is very difficult to face especially with a you know a talent like uh, Bailey but you know Bailey found a way to beat her and she'll do it again yeah and then they had you know Bailey sort of overcome with Nia and everything too so I I really liked it. That's what I'm saying. They can build that up as like this ultimate thing for for Bailey or whatever mm-hmm. if they have Nia win because obviously like Paul said, we've seen it but other people haven't. So it wouldn't be totally out of touch for them. But yeah, they they did have the uh main women's feud as well and that was they had this tag match set up. Uh, for Bailey, Sasha against Dana and Charlotte. Um, Dana came out, or Dana had a bad set seven with uh, Mick Foley and Charlotte, and Foley was like, "Well, you know what happened last week? Essentially, uh, we don't know what's going on with the women's title." And Charlotte was like, "Look, look at this, Mick. There's a double pin situation going on here." So essentially, I don't have a normal contender. And so Dana opens her mouth and thinks about, well, what if we cancel the time match and you just have a match with Sasha and Bailey have a match again to decide who's going uh, to face you at, at Clash of Champions. And then Foley turns around and turns into a triple threat. And so <laughs> then Charlotte gets mad and pushes Dana down. Then you have the tag match. Which now I don't remember how that ended, but yeah, I, I thought the tag match was pretty good. Sasha and Bailey, of course, work really well with each other. So I mean, I'm always up for watching them do anything together because they're great. I love the little bad side segment 
that they had as well, where they kind of just talk about, hey, well, you know, hey, whenever when I beat you for this, whenever when I beat you for this, like, they're obviously competitive and they're friends, but it doesn't bother them because they just uh, want to be the best, and that's totally fine. You don't always have to hate each other. Um, so it's a nice difference between what you're getting with Dana and Charlotte, aside from what you get from uh, Sasha and Bailey, but uh, how do you think they handle it? Do you like the idea of just having the triple threat already? You know, I, I don't have a problem with the triple threat. I, I think it works just fine. I mean, because, you know, once again, I, you, you wonder, you know, with the main audience here, how they feel about Bailey. You know, I know how we feel about Bailey, but, you know, you do wonder about those people who just now are getting to be introduced to her who she is, her character, all that entails. And I, I just wish I kind of knew that. I need to get in contact with more people that have no idea about anything else in wrestling, but Monday Night Raw. Uh, but saying that, I, I think that's fine. I love the way they, you know, introduced, you know, this whole thought process of, you know, Charlotte, you know, and the fact that she thinks it's unfair, blah, 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 the same stuff we get. I, I just I like what we've got here. We got Dana Brooke involved here where it makes sense that she got involved. You know, she's the one throwing out the ideas of how the matches should go. Mick Foley agrees. I like all that. To me it, it involves everyone. Um it's not just someone throwing in there just to throw them in there. So all four make sense to be in this tag match and Outside of that, I mean, I think they did a fine job building it up. The one thing I will say is going back to this whole Bailey thing. I kind of want to see more about building her up. And I know they don't have enough time. They only have three hours on the show. If they only could have four, so we could build up some people. But I think that, you know, Bailey is a great baby Please face. Please don't say you want to have four hours of Raw. I, I'm being facetious here. We, um, would, we would start sectioning off hours of it. Like, you would take <laughs> two hours, and I would take the other two hours, and that's how it's... I know. I'm sorry. I just being facetious. I just I think that Bailey it needs to be built up a little bit more personally, and I think they can do it. They have plenty of time. If you ask me, they can maybe skip out on maybe eight different video packages that don't need to be done. You know, except the Eddie Guerrero one, which we'll talk about that. But anyway, uh, I love that one. But it, it, Bailey just needs a little bit more time. They need to build her up more, so we really love her, so we really care about what she's doing, and she's doing good. She's doing fine herself. I just want to see more build. As a person that is of Latino Hispanic heritage, I think it's awesome that they are covering that just just like they cover the Black History Month. Yeah, it's all a PR thing, but it's about damn time, don't we? Just saying. Yeah, that's right. I I, I agree wholeheartedly, and uh, you know I think it's it's right. The NFL does it. I mean, all these other major sports leagues have taken the time to you know show respect and honor to some of the greats that have come in from different heritages. And WB, it's about time, like Sean said. Yeah, I mean the the women's uh, the women's feud here. I think it's fine. I think. They're trying to at least differentiate it from what you've been getting for the last couple of months with Sasha and Charlotte separately. So with all the pieces, I think, together at Clash, you might get something different. I'm pretty sure Dana's going to end up costing Charlotte the title accidentally. And they'll spin that out, and then they'll spin Sasha into whatever. And uh, you'll have to do something with... Bailey needs to keep getting close and just falling short of the mark if they're going for the same story they built for an NXT. Uh, so I don't know about her losing here, but... At the same time, I guess that's that's okay too because it's a throwaway tag, throwaway tag. Yeah, it is. It really is. And hey, just real quick, I mean, do you think that they need? Because I personally think that Bailey winning a women's championship needs to happen at WrestleMania, and of course, they're once again has to go with that build thing I have. But I just think that's the right time. I'm not saying it has to be this WrestleMania, but I'm just saying it has to be a WrestleMania for me because I think that's a big moment. It's really cool if they do that for her. I think if you build the story up correctly, it absolutely needs to be at WrestleMania. If it depends on how long they're going to stretch this out. Bailey's story in NXT got to span out over years. I don't know if they're going to wait one late that long on the main roster. Yeah, and I, I think you don't have to do that much building. I think Bailey already gets a lot of attention from 
from the audience as it is. I think a lot more than I think that would be expected when they brought her up. I think there was always that hesitation of, oh, the fans are not going to accept her like they do in, T- in, like in NXT, and we're going to see this happening, and it's going to be like every other NXT person. People are going to hype it up, and they're not going to be as popular, and we, we saw it with Finn, but we saw it to a greater extent with Bailey that the fans at least have been paying attention to her, and they do care about her. And yes, you do need to build her up, but I don't think you have to do it over years. I think they can do it in a shorter span because... You know, with people having injuries as much as you you have right now, it's really hard sometimes to do this, like, okay, we're going to have her lose this many times for this amount of time for years, and then we're going to build it to other things. Uh, because, you know, they're constantly going out every night having matches, and they're having these big matches on Raw that they weren't necessarily having on NXT. You just have those, like, once every couple months or whatever, it's it's one of those where you got to kind of pull the trigger faster than, say, in an XT where less chance of injury, I think, and less chance of other things happening where other people, you know, Vince gets tired of you, other things like that. NXT seems to always have a course of what they're doing. WWE doesn't always, I quite frankly, most of the time it seems like about 90% of the time they don't have this vision of what they're doing in two months, let alone next week, you know. So to say that they have a vision of what they want to do for someone for years, like in NXT, and that's really hard to say. Uh, Is there something we have not talked about from Raw? I think we covered the tag, we covered Jericho. Oh, Cesaro and Sheamus, the last match that Basically, we all knew it was going to be tied 3-3 so they could have the final match at Class of Champions. Uh, Cesaro wins. Uh, I did like these. Sheamus tried to do the getting on the ropes, and the ref caught him. And Cesaro wins with the neutralizer to pretty much cement that he fairly won and deserves to be tied and going into Class of Champions with a chance to win everything. So... I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, it was fine. You know, once again, you know, good match out of both these guys, and you know, you continue on the storyline. So nothing too, you know, special. I, I the one thing I, I do like is they kind of added some things in here. Like I'll just use this for the example of, uh, you know, Sheamus try to do the whole thing that uh, Cesaro won with, and that's you know, put his feet on the ropes and try to get the pin. So. I like the fact that the referee caught it, and of course we get the end here with Cesaro winning, but I thought that was kind of fun. I kind of smiled when I saw that. That was neat. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's really cool. I mean, not exactly the most uh, unexpected result, but I'm looking forward to see what these guys pull out of the clash. Yeah, it should be certainly interesting. And I... I one thing I didn't get to mention uh, before when we were talking about the, the main event part is that, you know, Rollins is getting those face reactions, sort of. And it should be interesting to see how, going further, if they really push him in that direction or whatever, because he did save Reigns and all that, even though, you know, you're not really saving another face at that point. But, you know, that would be keeps wanting to, to make us try to feel that way anyway. So the big reveal of the cruiserweights uh, was uh, here uh, on this show. T.J. Perkins did not appear. Uh, they just announced that he is a cruiserweight champion. Mick Foley introduced the four participants in the Fatal 4-Way to determine who would be his challenger, as we pretty much kind of predicted, I think, on on the Thursday show, that they would have a match that would set up who's going to be normal contender because... This is Clash of Champions, and all the champions have to be represented on that show. Uh, so it was Rich Swan, Grand Metallic, Cedric Alexander, and D. Brian Kendrick. The Memphis crowd could not give a total wet fart about most of these guys. They kind of cheered when Brian Kendrick came out, but that was it. This was probably the worst kind of crowd to debut these guys in front of. Uh, it kind of sucks because if you're not dancing to Rich Swan's music, I don't know what's you. Something's wrong with you. So 
that being said, I mean they had a they had a pretty good match. I uh, didn't you know nothing sort of like what we saw in the Cruiserweight Classic or anything, but you got to see them all kind of do big moves and everybody got their moment to shine. They got they did ch- uh, chant this is awesome when they did the big everybody go out and fly spot. But uh, you know it is this is what happens when you're kind of doing this at the last minute. Knowing this is the go home, and you've got to got to have an one contender. Do you think that it would have been better if they just had singles matches, or was this for the full way the best thing? It's kind of hard to say. Uh, for me personally, I, I do like the singles matches better. I, I think it really showcases what this division has been about, at least when you talk about the Cruiserweight Classic Series here in that tournament. I get why they may have done this. It's kind of like, hey, you know, we've got to hurry and get this thing together so we can get somebody that's going to be able to face TJ Perkins. But at the end of the day, we've got time. I'm not so worried about it. I get why they did what they did. It's not the end of the world. Now, if they continue things like this down the, the line here, I will be upset. I, you know, for me, I think this is a fine way to sort of debut. I, it, like Gary said, it's not something you should continue to do. What they needed was a showcase. I think you got that here. It's just a shame that the crowd didn't seem to care. Yeah, not one bit. I mean, they were, oh, they just. Yeah, they were dead mm. silent when Swan came out. Nothing for Metal Eek either. Like I said, it was Brian Kendrick because they know who he is, sort of. And that was it. It was like, wow. I mean, goodness. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that pretty much covers... Well, I did like the fact that they had little inset promos for uh, Cedric Alexander and Metalik, who they're obviously pushing as the guys that they like the most. Um, you know, and one thing I will say before we get out of here is... Can we please, look, you cannot do this every time that you talk about the Cruiserweights, or that you're going to fall into that same trap that you do with the Cruiserweights in the past. Like, the whole point about wrestling now is that, at least in the way that it has changed, is that size does not matter. That is why you have all of these smaller guys, and guys that look like Kevin Owens, and all that that can be your champions. If you're going to do that, but then you're going to be this cruiserweight division and go say, oh, it's not about the size. It's about their heart. It's not about this. Look, if you're making mention about it, it's because it is. Okay? You know, it's it's like the person that continues to say that it's not about you. It's me. It's really about you. So, Vince McMahon, please get your head out of your ass. This is not 1985. And stop talking, having the announcers talk about the size and all the stuff that they are. Just don't mention it. Just have them go out there and wrestle. They're just a cruiserweight division. Just This is so stupid. This is what I was worried about, that this will be continued to be a thing, and we're, they're going to get pigeonholed, and they're never going to be able to get out of this division, and it's going to be the, you know, it's going to eventually be the same thing over and over every week, and... You know, I don't want to be cynical, but it's just like that already put a bad taste in my mouth when I'm sitting there hearing this over and over and over before they even debut. Just like, stop mentioning that, please. Yeah, it definitely can be mentioned way too much. I agree, and I, I sure hope they don't do what you know you're talking about here, and that's pigeonholing guys in that cruiserweight division. I have the same fears. I don't know. I'm just really, really hoping they're just kind of putting that out there for people who are just now getting to see these guys. You know, the Cruiserweight Classic maybe have not been viewed by everyone of that audience. I'm sure for a fact that's the case. So and unless, you know, Vince is planning on doing that every week, you know, but you never know. Maybe he's just doing it out of his own insecurities or something like that. Because, you know, it, when you start letting people, everybody know the size doesn't matter, things like that, you know, you start to wonder. You know, I mean, obviously, you don't want them to get pigeonholed, but there is something, uh, I mean, if they're not already building the division around this being 
a distinct style, something that makes them different from everything. They need to treat it sort of like the X Division used to be treated. It's a different style than what you get from the other guys, and I think you get that in the showcase match. I don't know if the announcers put that across, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very true. So we just got to get to a rating here. Ooh, Sean, I'm trying to think. You know <sighs> The, you know, I, I think we talked about this last week, you know, about the go-home show, and I was really concerned about the go-home show, really concerned about everything that was going to be involved, you know, how they were going to beat last week, and I really don't feel like they beat last week. They they did a lot of good things when it comes to informing you what's going to be a night of champions. They had some decent things, but to me personally, there was a lot of time filled with talking, a lot of time filled with, really, some of these matches just didn't matter. At the end of the day, they, they come out to inconclusive results. So I, I think for me personally, I, I'm going to go with a six, maybe two junior. I'm going to go with five. And I know that sounds crazy, but I just, I had to get through this role. I, I was not at all just enthused. I was going to go with a six as well. That seems to be leading our poll of late night voters here. Uh, as well, it's either it's between a six and a seven. And wow, so I'm one, a point lower. Wow, than everybody else. It's crazy. And you had a one person trolling, I think, putting a ten here. But uh, uh, Paul, why, Paul? Why would you do that? Uh, you know me. <laughs> but yeah, I think six sounds fair to me. Just it's not a show that was. You had some good stuff. You had some uh, good day views and stuff like that. Um, I mean, the cruiserweight stuff was fine, but there was nothing overall, like, overly memorable about the show. It just kind of felt like, okay, we know we got this thing on Sunday that we got to promote. Here's a few things to to get you there, and hopefully you watch us on Sunday. Exactly. And, of course, on Sunday, uh, there will be that big not a, uh, not a Champion show. And, of course, you know, we'll have our special show. We always do a post-pay-per-view show that will be wrestling unwrapped to the max. You don't want to miss that. Uh, that will be available on the W2M Network. Yeah, that's easy. Just go on there, and it will be right there for you uh, already in your docket if you download, uh, you know, this whole, you know, subscribe to the WTM Network. Plus, don't forget, also, you know, tonight we still have another show we'll be doing. So after you get through listening to this, pop on over and head to Wrestling to the Max episode 213, guys. That's right. We are going to be talking a lot about the big wrestling news that's been going on this past week. Uh, one of those is Brandy Rhodes assigned uh, to WB, uh, from WB to over to TNA. I know I'm getting crazy. Back! She's back! No, she's not. She's over at TNA now. Uh, she's a knockout, and she's no longer, you know, ring announcing. So we'll be talking about that. And Cody Rhodes has got some things in the works too, with a lot more news than that, guys. You want to go check that show out. Plus, we're talking Ring of Honor. That's right. They had a big episode this week. We'll be getting into. You don't want to miss any of that. So you know, without further ado, we want to thank everybody for stopping by and checking out the Raw review. Don't forget tomorrow night SmackDown Live uh, review. We'll be doing that as well. So. Anyway, we'll get out of here, guys, and we'll see you on the other show. Until then, if you're not living life to the max, not living life at all, you know it. Please. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.